Do you want to learn how to host two different Rails applications on the same server? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Braintrust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack development, please consider subscribing below. I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers and I'm gonna need a lot of help. So if you know somebody who you think may be interested in this type of content and you're willing to share with them, I'd really appreciate it. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna walk through all the steps you need to host two or more different Rails applications on the same Amazon EC2 instance. We're gonna be referencing several previous tutorials here. So I'll link everything down in the description as well as the card above. One important caveat to note here is you're gonna to wanna to have a good idea of your application's traffic. In our case, they're just two pretty small, pretty simple applications that aren't really overwhelmed with a lot of traffic. So that's not gonna be a concern for us in my case, but you just wanna make sure that that's not a concern for you in your case if you're gonna follow along. With that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial to learn how to host two or more completely different Rails applications on the same EC2 instance. As you can see, we've got the Brain Trust website open. We're gonna move this Rails application to run on the same server as the AWS Rails application. Here in another tab, I'm just logged into AWS Management Console, specifically in the EC2 section, to manage our servers. We'll flip back over to the Brain Trust digital website. Here in our terminal application, we are going to SSH into the AWS Rails server. We're using SSH config here. So if you need to know how to set that up, I'll link that video in the card as well as the description below. Once we log onto the server, we're gonna to need to generate a new SSH key for the Braintrust Digital website. The reason for this is that we need to add a new deploy key to the Braintrust Digital app in GitHub. Keys cannot be duplicated in GitHub. Therefore, you will have to generate a new key for every single application that you want on a server. We'll go ahead and run the keygen command. Here we're gonna copy the first part of this, but we're going to name it differently. We already have an ID RSA that's being used for the AWS Rails website. So instead, we are going to name this Braintrust RSA. Now that we've generated our key, we need to add it to GitHub. I'm gonna quickly walk through this, uh, but I've covered this in depth in a video how to add your SSH keys to a GitHub account. So if you want more detail, you're gonna to wanna to watch that video. In this case, we'll just quickly cat out the public key and we're gonna copy that so we can add it to GitHub. Once we are logged into GitHub and we have opened up our applications repository, you're gonna click the settings button, deploy keys, add a new deploy key. We're gonna paste in the key. Once you paste in your key, you can give it a title. In this case, we're gonna call it Braintrust AWS Rails Server. And we're gonna add the key. Here you'll need to confirm with your password. The next thing we need to do on the server is create an SSH config file. Again, if you want details here, you're gonna to wanna to reference the SSH config file tutorial I created in the past, which is linked in the description. The only difference from that video to this one is that that was created locally, whereas this config file will be used by our server. The basic idea here is that the server needs to switch between different keys so it can correctly pull the right application from GitHub. To create this file, we'll type sudo nano ssh config, just as you see on the screen. Next, we're gonna paste in our configuration and walk through it. So we have two hosts registered here. First, AWS Rails. It's going to use the host name GitHub. This will use the default identity file we created when we initially deployed this application. Next, we are adding a second host, Braintrust, which will also point to github.com, but use a separate identity file, the new one we just created. So we're gonna go ahead and break out of that and save, hit enter. We're gonna open a new tab so we can complete some work on the applications, as they're gonna require a minor change to their deployments to account for these new identities. First, we'll CD into the AWS Rails application. I've also got that opened in my text editor. The specific line we're gonna change is the repo URL. We're only gonna change a small portion, the portion that says github.com. Instead, we're gonna name this identically to our host name. In our case, this was AWS Rails. Everything else will stay the same here. 
It's very important this identically matches your host name or this won't work. Now that we've updated the application, we should be able to see this change reflected in Git. We'll check out a new branch quickly, add our new code, commit our code with a message. At this point, you would typically push your code, create a pull request and have a coworker review. Since we're just working by ourselves here, we're just gonna go ahead and merge. So we'll check out master and merge. Finally, we will push this up to our external repository, GitHub. If we've done everything correctly, we should be able to deploy our AWS Rails application. We do that using bundle exec cap production deploy. Now that our application has finished deploying, we can quickly flip back over to the browser and refresh the AWS Rails application just to make sure everything works as we expect. Uh, so it looks like we're good to go there. So what do we actually do here? We just proved that we can deploy the AWS Rails application to its current server using the server's new SSH config. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process and make a few other changes to the Braintrust digital application so that we can deploy it to the same AWS Rails server to run two Rails applications on the exact same server. We'll CD into the Braintrust app, clear the screen. One really important step you want to take before making this migration is to pull your production database down locally. I've covered this in a past tutorial video on how to sync a database between environments. We're using the Capistrano DB Tasks gem, which gives us the ability to run bundle exec cap production DB pull. This will pull down the production database to our local instance. After we finish our transition over to the new server, we can then push this production database up to that new server so we don't have to worry about re-entering data or any type of long migration process that could prove difficult. So now that we got our production database pulled down locally, we can continue moving forward. And then I've also got the app loaded here in Sublime Text. Again, we are going to update the repo URL, specifically the github.com portion. We're gonna replace it with Braintrust, spelled exactly as we did in our SSH config file on the AWS Rails server, so that this will match up and use the new IDRSA, specifically the Braintrust underscore RSA file that we've linked in GitHub. There's a couple more changes we need to make here though. We're gonna to need to update the IP address to point to the AWS Rails EC2 instance. So let's flip back over to the AWS console and then we'll grab that now and update that accordingly. If we flip back over to the terminal, we can run get status to check all of our changes. Next, we can check out a branch. We can add all of our changes. Next, we can commit our changes with a message. We'll go ahead and push them up to GitHub. At this point, you would typically create a pull request and then have somebody review that for you um, to double check your code. But in our case, we're just going to, of course, check out master and then merge this branch immediately. So we'll run get check out master. Then we'll run get merge. Uh, looks like I had a typo in my branch name, so I'm just gonna copy that down since we have the extra A there and update. We'll merge that branch and then we will push the results up to GitHub. Next, we can clear the screen and run our deploy with bundle exec cap production deploy. Here you can see this application uses a different version of Ruby. So we need to flip back over to the tab we had on the server and install that really quickly. We're using rbenv, so we will type in rbenv install rbm install 2.6.3. I'll pause the video while this runs as this can take quite a while to install various versions of Ruby. Now that our Ruby version has finished installing, we can flip back over to our application and attempt to deploy again. This won't succeed since we have not created the linked files, but it did begin to create some of the folder structure for us. So let's go into that folder structure and create those now on the server. Here, if we list the directories, you can see we have the Braintrust application, so we can CD into there. We'll go into shared, config, and then in this folder, we'll need to create our database.yml and our master.key files. To create this, we'll run sudo nano database.yml. We'll open up the database.yml file, 
and copy that and paste it here and then save. We'll also need to create our master.key file. I've edited that portion out for obvious reasons, but you're just gonna to wanna to paste the contents of your master.key file into this file on the server so that you can access your Rails credentials. One other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here before we flip back over to the application is to create our database in Postgres. So we'll type sudo su dash Postgres. We're in the create db dash o deploy brain trust. We can run exit now that we've created our database. Here we can clean the screen, flip back over to our application tab and attempt to deploy again. I just wanna interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes, down. Yes, roll over. Good boy, you're the goodest boy. Good boy, down. down. Oh my gosh, we're going viral, bear. Now that our deployment has finished, we're getting really close. That's a big step in the right direction, but we're not quite finished. So we gotta flip back over to the server. So our application has successfully deployed, but we haven't told Nginx how to route how to route traffic to this application. So we need to create a sites enabled file. Here on the AWS Rails server, we will run sudo nano etsy nginx sites enabled. We're gonna call this file the name of our site, brain-trust.io. Inside this nginx configuration file, I'm gonna go ahead and paste my server block. I've gone through this in depth in my uh, how to deploy your first Ruby on Rails application. So for now, I'm just gonna paste the configuration, uh, but you're gonna wanna reference that video for details about the specifics. I'll link that video in the card as well as the description below. So let's go ahead and save that. As you can see, we now have configuration for both AWS Rails and Braintrust. To ensure that Nginx picks up our new configuration, let's restart, sudo service, Nginx restart. And finally, we need to flip back over to the AWS console and open up route 53 to point to our new server, or rather our old server, the AWS Rails server, instead of the Braintrust digital server. So in the services, we're gonna check route 53. Here in our Braintrust hosted zone, we're gonna update our A record. While we could update the IP address, let's instead map this address to our load balancer. So we're gonna select the application load balancer, US East one and than our specific AWS Rails load balancer. Since the load balancer points to the EC2 and both applications are on that same EC2 instance, this should work just fine. If we flip back over to the Braintrust application and refresh, you can see it's still functioning. If we switch to the terminal and ping the domain, you can see it's no longer pointing to the old EC2 instance whose IP address began with 5.4, as you can see here in the AWS console. So there's a few issues with this page. We don't have any of our old content. Our blog posts are not showing up and our gear. This page is actually just breaking because it's relying on the content to be there. The reason for this is we didn't pull over the database. If you will recall, towards the beginning of this tutorial, we pulled our production data down locally. We'll now use that same technique in reverse to push this production data back up to our new server instance. So populate our new production database with our old production database values. To do so, we'll run bundle exec cap production db push. We'll say yes. You wanna be careful doing this as you can run into issues like this one. In this case, what happened is our Postgres deploy user does not have permissions to create a database. As part of our db push command, the Capuchon or db tasks gem deletes the production database and replaces it with the new production database. Since the deploy user doesn't have permissions to create a new database, it just deletes the production database. So I just wanna point this out so that you're extremely careful whenever you're using this command to make sure that you have a backup of your database or you just don't care about the data you have. In our case, our data is just fine on the old production server, as well as locally on our application, since we just pulled it down. Here in our server, we will run the sudo su postgres. Next, we will rerun the create 
db command with the deploy user and the database of Braintrust. Now that we've recreated our database, let's jump into PSQL. We will alter our deploy user to give them create db permissions. Next, we'll run control D to break out and then exit. Now you can flip back over to your application and one more time run the bundle exact cap production db push command. This time, if all goes well, our local database, which we had immediately pulled down from production, will get pushed up. As you can see, that's successfully completed. If we flip back over to the application and refresh, there we go. Here's the gear page. Now that that's complete, there's a few more steps we can take to clean up. First, we can flip back over to the EC2 instance, and we're going to want to stop our brain trust instance. Since we're no longer using this, we want to stop it so that we'll no longer pay for it. Let's go ahead and do that now. Click on the instance, click actions, and click stop. There we go. It looks like the stop has completed. So in this case, I'll just let this hang around for like a week or so. Um, and then as long as I can ensure that everything's still working like I expect and I'm not missing anything uh, or there's not any errors as a result of this move, then I'll go ahead and delete that instance at that time. This is a bit of a longer tutorial, so I hope I didn't lose all of you. Um, as always, I hope you found this helpful. Please leave questions or comments in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Uh, we're a smaller channel, so that really helps us out. And as always, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.